Okay, guys. Yes, this is yours truly, Pastor Ewing here, as promised, uh, with another fasting video. I decided to come to this beautiful background and put on my nice tropical shirt, <laughs> okay, to go along with the beautiful background. But of course, you will see here, our teaching today is very, very powerful association during times of fasting. And this is something that I think a lot of you should pay attention to because the people you are associated with, the people who you are in company with, even the people who claim to be fasting with you, I really think you need to do a review because it's going to impact what you're trying to achieve greatly, okay? Uh, as usual, I'm going to try my best to keep this under 40 minutes and I have to before the sun goes down. Aside from that, it's going to look a little darkish because it's kind of cloudy, but that's quite fine, okay? So what I want us to do I want us to go to a law, the law of association first, and then we're going to look into two scriptures and then bring it all together, okay? So let's look at the law of association in Proverbs 13, verse 20. Proverbs 13, verse 20 says, He that walk with wise men shall be wise. In other words, a person that is in the consistent or the uh, repetitive company of wise people they don't have to sit down and take notes of what they're doing to become wise. According to this law, they would be gleaning from them by default. We see that all the time in everyday life. Certain people we hang around, there's certain traits that we pick up, creatures of habits. So we just pick up certain traits, display them, and don't even realize that we're gleaning from somebody else. So the Bible says, He that keepeth company with wise men shall become wise. And it goes on to say, But a companion of fools shall be destroyed now yes those who keep company with fools will become fools but in this particular scripture it took us straight to the end of uh, what will become of them as, as, as the, the, the reward of being a fool they will be destroyed but we want to focus on the entire law of association in regard to our fasting and i know there are many people who are saying boy I care by fasting with you boy so and so you know and then another reason, because there are two points I'm trying to make here. Review those who claim to be fasting with you. And secondly, you might not have sufficient faith during your fast because you're so overwhelmed with your situation. However, those who are fasting with you, who are of like or even greater faith, would be a major asset to you, whereby the Lord will look at their faith and take from their faith to answer your prayer even though you don't have sufficient faith okay so I'm gonna give you two scenarios very quickly here from Scripture and the first one here is going to be uh, mark okay let's look at mark uh, chapter I hope I wrote this down correctly yeah mark chapter 5 let's look at mark chapter 5 okay mark chapter 5 and we're going to read from verse 21 to verse 24 and then from verse 35 to verse 42 and we're going to see the importance of association okay this is very very much key so mark chapter 5 verse 21 and listen to what it says we're going to read to verse 24 and when jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side much people gathered unto him and he was nigh or close unto the sea verse 22 of mark 5 and behold there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, when Jairus saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lied at the point of death, I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Verse 24. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and throng him. Now the reality is Jesus didn't go to Jairus' daughter immediately because he had an encounter as those of you would know the rest of the story with this lady who had an issue of blood. Okay so we're going to skip that for the sake of this teaching and we're going to jump straight to verse 35. Okay so we're going to pick up at verse 35. Verse 35 says while he yet spoke there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Now they're claiming 
she's dead. It don't even make no sense coming no more, Mr. Jesus. You're too late here. Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? In other words, don't bother Jesus to come anymore because the girl is dead. This is Jairus' daughter. Verse 36 of Mark 5. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, I love this piece, listen very carefully. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he being Jesus said unto the ruler of the synagogue, okay, because this is your daughter. He said to the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Only believe, okay? Now your daughter is sick, okay? They saying she's dead. So according to them, she can't do nothing for herself right now. So it's gonna require your faith, Mr. Daddy, okay, for this to be, for this miracle to take place. So verse 37 says, and he, which is Jesus, watch his strategical move now. Remember what this teaching is about. It's about associating, how we associate with people during our time of fasting in regard to our beliefs, our faith and everything. We gotta make sure that they're on the same uh, plane with us or at worst case scenario, they are at a higher faith level than us, okay? And he suffered or allowed no man to follow him. Jesus didn't allow no man to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. Verse 38 of Mark 5. And he, which is Jesus, came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. So they were convinced that this girl was dead. Verse 39 of Mark 5 says, And when he was coming, when Jesus came in, he said unto them, watch this now, Why makest ye this ado? And weep. The damsel is not dead, but asleep. So clearly we knew where their faith was at the time based on their behavior, the weeping and the wailing. They were convinced that she was dead and there was nothing that can be done for her. Okay, watch this. Verse 40, and they laughed. Can you imagine that? They laughed him to scorn, being Jesus. But when he had put them all out, this is what I'm looking at right here. I see where your position is. You got some friends in that right now. Kevin, I believe in just like everybody else on for, with you on this fast. And I believe that 2023 is going to be a game changer going into 2024. But, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe I feel a certain way. Mm. I got to keep a distance there. See, Jesus realized that what he's about to do, the core ingredients is faith. Meaning, I believe the word of God over whatever is being presented to me, no matter how overwhelming the evidence is. So the Bible says in verse 40, and they laughed Jesus to scorn, but when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was laying. Let me take those who are of like faith. Let me associate with those who understand how this thing operates. I don't need somebody with me Okay, who wavering, who's doubting. Everything is a but. Everything is how they feel or my thing is. No, if we agree that we are on this fast, it simultaneously should suggest that we all agree to the scriptures. No matter how impossible the situation may be, our focus should be what the scripture says. So the Bible says Jesus took those, he, he dismissed some, but then he took others with him. He dismissed those who were not in association with the belief that she could be raised out of the sleep or from death based on those who were willing to believe that she was in. So you see clearly the scripture is pointing out to us. We have to be very, very careful even, and I see why the Bible talks about, uh, you know, when you go on a fast also, we shouldn't be discussing this with everybody. We shouldn't be telling everybody we're on this fast. And this is a primary reason why. You see, not everybody is where you are or where you think they should be. So therefore, you should not assume that because you're at this particular level with your faith, it constitutes that those whom you call friends are at this level also. So for our, our, our fast to be effective, it is important that we associate with those that are of like faith or even greater in their faith. Okay, this, this is crucial to understand. Watch this now. 
verse 41. And he, which is Jesus, took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talatha komai, which is being which is the damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway or immediately the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years old, 12 years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straight that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. So again, that is the first scenario where it is very clear. If you're on a fast, okay, and you and a group of people, or even while you're on this corporate fast that uh, my ministry is doing, end of your fast 2023, it is important that you, if you decide to go on it with other folks and, you know, join your faith together, Make sure that these people are serious people. Make sure that these people are like, there's no time during your fasting you should hear, what if, I feel a certain way, or but, or no. It, we should be concretely of the equal understanding that our circumstances isn't where our hope is. Despite our circumstances, despite the, despite the seemingly hopelessness of it, or the impossibility, we are focused on what the Word of God says. That's our faith. That's what we believe. Secondly, I would say, in this particular instance here, if you cannot find serious people, then do it by yourself. Ask God to give you the faith or add to your faith, okay, the endurance and, and to help your unbelief during this time where you demand a change in your life. And you're making this sacrifice because you insist on the change that you want to see uh, come about. Okay, so let's look at our final scripture. Let's go to Mark chapter 2. I love this one. Mark chapter 2. Again, our topic here is that the association during times of fasting. Okay, so let's go to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2 here. And then we're going to read from verse 3. Okay to verse 12 okay so listen to this mark chapter 2 beginning at verse 3 and they came unto him bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four so there were four men okay who were alive and active who brought their friend I think palsy meant he was paralyzed I could I stand to be corrected but I believe that's what it meant so these four friends were convinced they had faith, even though this, the, 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 the lame one or the paralyzed one could do nothing for himself. These four friends brought their friend who was sick with the palsy to Jesus. Now watch this, verse 4 of Mark 2. And when they could not come nigh or close unto him, being Jesus, for the press, sorry, for the press they uncovered the roof. So in other words, because they couldn't get in through the normal door because there was so much people, the Bible says these four guys went up on the roof, cut the roof open, pulled their friend up and lowered him down. This how convinced they were. This how strong their faith was that Jesus is the living word of God. Jesus is the bread of life. They were convinced. See, this is what happens when you believe more in the one who is going to do the miracle, do the healing. When you believe more than that, then the seemingly impossible situation you're trying to overcome. See, true faith makes you behave as if you're a mad person. It, mad in the sense that folks already counted the situation out. It cannot be reversed. It cannot be fixed. But for whatever reason, your, your confidence is in the word of God. Your faith, meaning I not only acknowledge Jesus Christ, but I believe with my heart, I my focus. Listen, whatever you are believing for in this fast, I've said this a trillion times over, your focus should be on what the Bible said. That's why I said, get the scriptures that are relative to your situation. That's where your focus should be, not on the situation. You can always tell people who are wavering in faith. And how would you know that? Because they're more focused. I don't know if this is going to work. This is the third day now and things are getting so bad. Oh my God, I might as well just give up. It don't make no sense. I'm so hungry. Listen, I don't know about you, but I cannot take a complaining person. I cannot take a person who, whenever you shoot a solution to them, they got 469,000 excuses not to do it. I don't want to be associated with people like that. 
So the Bible says here, here we go. It says, and when they, verse 4, and when they could not come close unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, Jesus was, and when they had broken it up, the roof that is, and let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay, they lowered their friend down there. Jesus, I don't care what you doing. I don't care who you healing or who leg you straightening out right now. I lowered my friend down, okay? Watch this, verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, this is what I love. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Who was their faith? When he saw the faith of this one sick with the palsy, friends, their faith. You, you see that? It was because of what they believe. They agree to we, these four friends says, this is the living, this is the son of the living God, Jesus Christ. This is the word made flesh. This is the one who God referred to when he spoke to the children of Israel. I have sent my word, Jesus Christ, to heal you. You all hear this? They, they were so convinced. And because of that, Jesus stopped what he was doing. Whoever leg he was straightening it at the time, whoever eyes he was healing, that, that one of those eyes had to be put on hold till he finished up with these dudes who ain't playing at all. It was because of their faith that the friend was made whole. You see what I'm telling you now? You see the importance of being rightly associated during your time of fasting? It is imperative who you connect with. I say all the time in my, uh, my marriage teachings and so on, I said your, your, your connections will determine your direction. Very clear. Who you associate with will determine your outcome. You see it in marriages, you see it on jobs you go to, you see it with friends you connect with, you see it with environments and communities and families you connect with. You see that the minute you join with them, it produce a particular result. So you cannot be on this fast and demanding change and you all hype for change. But the people that you're associated with are wavering. The people who claim that, hey, look here, we go on this fast together. We can do three, four, seven days. Come to find out they just stuffing their face with food, watching TV, scrolling through their phone for hours. doing. But again, you knew this because you saw them in, in their behavior in everyday life. You don't want to, if anything, listen, you do what you got to do. Let me do what I have to do. So watch this. So verse 5 says of Mark 2, When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? So you see these guys, and that's why I tell you, boy, religious folks, Listen, they so adamant about following their particular rules and how they think things should go that they neglect a healing. They neglect your breakthrough. And you know what that says to me? Because people say to me all the time, Boy, Kevin, you know, I told my pastor about you and I told him to watch your videos and I told my evangelist or my so on and, and all they did was criticize you even though you given scriptures. And I said to them, but he given the word of God. See, this is what happens. People who already set to their program, not the program of God, not the program of Jesus, it don't matter how much scriptures you spit out. It doesn't matter how much revelation you bring. What matters to them? This is not the way that I do it. And, and why would you bring this, show me this video when you know what I teach you? So it have nothing to do with the revelation for breakthrough. Again, it goes right back. Your association. Now look at every, now that you see that, look at everybody else in this place you call church. Look at them. They're like slaves. They're like puppets. They're like zombies. Everybody, yes sir, no sir, amen, hallelujah. No progress. No going forward. Because all of them unknowingly are on one accord and agreeing with failure. Unknowingly. By following a man-made script and not the rules, the regulations, the principles, the ordinance, the precepts, and the command of the Lord God Almighty. That is what's going to make the change. If your pastor, if your apostles, or whoever, if their faith is not cemented in what that scripture says, it's time to roll up out of there. 
See, because to me, I don't care how much I dislike a person attitude and how they preach or they may have a I don't mind once they spitting those scriptures, once they and, and tying them together and showing me the rules, man, I ain't got time for what others think of you or or what I like or dislike. I focus on what I need. I need that word right there. I like the way you put that. I ain't got to take you home and live with me. And, and, and live. No, no, no. I don't know. Let me come here. Let me come take what I came here for. And a lot of people, they don't know how to separate the sheep from the goat. They don't know how to chew up the meat and spit out the bones. Everything they take personal. And while they're taking personal, they don't realize the devil is giving them a counterfeit. And, 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 and pulling them away with God has secured. He says, listen, Mary Jane, Tom, Pookie, Rary, y'all, just hear this word for y'all. Don't mind the vessel, man. That's them. That's who they are. Accept them for who they are. In fact, you don't got to accept them nothing. Get that word. That's all you're interested in. You don't have to take them for dinner. You don't have to go out. You don't have to go play hockey or basketball together. You came for the word. Once you get what you need, now go apply it. Make it applicable. Believe the word. Believe that word and run with the word of God. And watch the change. People too, too, too. It's like during this time of fasting, let me even add this while I remember it. During this time of fasting, my sisters and brothers, be very, very careful of that subtle spirit of offense. You see? Because you could be very much offended. You could be very much offended and losing your whole focus on the fast. Okay? Now you're going to hear in the background of boat that's going to pass us in a little bit. That will be the noise. So as soon as they pass, you will just continue. But in any event, watch out for that spirit of offense and it lurks around those especially those who are serious about their fasting okay that spirit is gonna try to stop you okay that spirit is gonna try to stop you from getting what you came to get from breaking what you came to break so offense is gonna come the Bible says woe from whom that offense come so don't don't get all involved in that man you stay focused Stay on the right path. Don't get all tied up and stuff, but don't have absolutely nothing to do with you. Let's just finish this up before we close it here. So the Bible says here in verse 8, it says, And immediately, verse 8 of Mark 2, And immediately Jesus, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reason within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Verse 9 of Mark 2. Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power mm -hmm, on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy. Verse 11 of Mark 2. Jesus was speaking. I say unto thee, Arise, he's talking to the man with the palsy now. Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. Mighty God. You all hear that? Why do I love the scripture? I love the scripture because the scripture is saying that this man was healed based on the faith of his friends. I, I gotta let that marinate just a little bit. The faith of his friends. Is this to say he did not fit? I'm sure he probably had something going on there, but this man was all... Listen, you could ever... You remember being in positions where you... Uh, I remember I told you a story a time years ago. My son was about four or five years old. Had this fever. I couldn't take him to the hospital because he was storming outside. And I took his student lands and asked Kev, do you believe that God could heal him? That's the only thing I wanted because I was agreeing on the word of God and not what I saw. He said, yes, daddy. And very short price, say, Father God, and I think I quoted Matthew 18, 19, and I break this fever. Within f less than five minutes, the fever was literally gone. You see, your belief, your belief, your belief is the key to the access of the things you want. And then for most of you listening to me right now, you're going to have to disconnect yourself, even if just temporarily, from some folks around you. You have to, ain't nothing personal, you know. Nothing personal in the sense that 
I don't hate you, but what I'm trying to achieve, I can't bring you with me right now. You, you and I ain't on the same level here. You do not want to go to next year the same way. You do not want to get the same results. You do not want to go around that mountain all over again. You've been going around for 40, 30, 20, 25, 50, and five years of your life. So you, the sacrifice, listen, the sacrifice isn't even so much not eating during the fast. But look at the biggest sacrifice you're going to be making right now is, is doing things differently. That's it. Doing it different to get a different result. End of story. So my sisters and brothers, like I said, I don't plan to stay here long with you. I just want you to grab a hold of these teachings. Go back over these teachings. I promise you that I would come every day. For those of you who didn't know, I had a little, I had something going on. I don't know if it was a cold, whatever it was, it, it had me kind of a little mash up, but that's all right. That get knocked out. And I knew this was going to happen because I, knew, I know for a fact this fast here, this fast here is going to be a game changer for many. I said to you in my last video last night, every one of you that are truly doing this thing the right way, I, I bind my faith with yours. I believe, I believe, I believe, and I stand on Matthew 18, 19. We have a two or more of us touching anything on us, I shall ask the Father in the name of Jesus shall be done. Whatever it is, according to the will of God for your life that you're seeking God for, not only do I pray that God will meet your expectation, but I apply the rule according to Ephesians 3 and 20 that he will do abundantly, sorry, exceedingly and abundantly, and above all that which you, above all that you could ever ask or think. He's the God of more than enough. This is how you're going to know he's showing up. You asked for this, but he gave you this, that, and whatever else. And it isn't about things. To me, listen, because God has done so much for me, it is just uh, the mightiness of God. Meaning that if someone had told me this 30, 40 years ago, I'd be like, I ain't nobody on this fake thing care of talking about. But for me to, for the, to see the manifestation of the invisible God according to the way he has said it in his rules. I could never doubt that it isn't God that's doing this because I'm following the rules and I'm getting exactly what the rules are telling me. Promise me. So please folks, let's pray for one another. Those of us who are this fast so serious, don't be selfish. Pray. Father God, I pray for my friends in the Bahamas. I pray for my set friends. And remember, this social media. So people all over the world, Father, those right now who are on this fast or any other fast that they're on, I bind my faith with their faith. That's how we got to pray. We got to remember, this is about association. We are joining our faith with those who truly believe the scriptures, who truly believe the word of the living God, who, be who truly believe that Jesus is the word of God. If you truly believe that, I, your brother here, Kevin L. Ewing, I stand with you. I come in agreement with you. Whatever you're believing for, a restoration of your marriage, you're believing that your children will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and fulfill the plan of God in their lives. You're believing for your own business. You're believing for that promotion. You're believing that God will find you a pastor. He said, I will give you pastors after his own heart. You're believing for the right church. You're believing for your own home. You're believing that everything you want and will acquire in this life will be debt free. I stand in agreement with you if we are both standing on the promises of God. Recite the scriptures as it relates to your situation. Don't focus on that situation. You, God already, you've already made it clear from the beginning of your, your fast. Father, my situation is with my marriage, my health, whatever. He already noticed. This ain't nothing he don't know. You don't deal with that part of it. The only thing you should be praying after that is the scriptures in relationship to that. If it's healing, Father, I ain't even running on to tell you what my problem is because you are all knowing. But I thank you for what your words say. So what am I teaching you? To focus on the word. That's what we focus in on. I focus in on this word, bro. I don't care how this pain stick in me here. I focus in because of his stripes, I am healed. He sent his word to heal me. You want some more licks, devil? Huh? You want some more licks? Healing is the children's bread. That's how you pray, man. When you serious, you, you stick with the word. You know who ain't serious? Those who believe more in their problems and situation than they believe in the word of God, okay? So I thank you again for this brief moment I promise I was gonna spend with you. I want you to take a beautiful look at this beautiful canal waterway. This leads out straight into the ocean there. 
And again, like I told you, uh, my future teachings will be outside. It wasn't outside those couple of days because I was home and sick there, but that's fine. Right? But God bless you. I'm encouraging you once again. I will continue to encourage you until December 31st. God spare all of our lives. And God bless you. And you have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon.